Welcome to the Henbury Books podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Muddett, and I'm the founder and publisher at Henbury Books. Today, our guest is Eileen O'Healy. She is the writer of the best-selling Ashling, Ashling and Amelia, award-winning children's series, Penny the Pencil, PEP Squad, and Kitten Caboodle. O'Healy describes herself as a nerd, but is in fact an astrophysicist and science educator. Her latest book is a graphic novel called 50 Ways to Die in Space. Eileen, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I would love to know what prompted you to become a children's author. Oh, well, I was doing my PhD and as I was writing it up, um, my supervisor said, well, oh, you know, you might want to aim this a little bit, pitch it a bit higher, otherwise you're insulting the intelligence of your examiners because I was trying to make it really easy to understand so anyone could pick it up and know what I was talking about, but that's not the idea of academic writing. And about that time I started reading Harry Potter and I thought, mm-hmm. I would like to write books that people want to read for fun rather than scientific papers that people need to read for work sort of thing. And then I, so I finished the PhD and I did lots of writing classes and they said, when I handed stuff into the teacher, she said, oh, this won't win this particular competition because it's a children's story. And I said, no, it's not. She said, yes, it is. And then I, um, tried writing other things but I just writing for kids works well for me I've read a lot when I was a child and that's kind of my book sync thing I prefer to read young adult and also middle grade books now so yeah it's just the right niche for me so what do you love about it like it's very deliberate to write for a young audience rather Mm -hmm. than for adults is it the reactions and things from children yeah um it's also the writing process itself like I like thinking about animated stationary objects like what they would say how they would interact with each other there's just that little bit I guess it's a little bit of a fantasy aspect that you can add in and I just really enjoy that sort of world I enjoy thinking that I'm a 10 year old again and yeah 10 is the best age yeah and and all the hopes that you have for the future at that point in time as well and I just Mm. capturing that and being that person again and adding that sort of idea to all my characters Mm. So uh, what sort of age span are your books targeted towards? Um, So they're mainly middle grade, which is sort of middle to middle primary school to upper primary school and maybe the first year or two of high school. Your latest book, 50 Ways to Die in Space, has some amazing endorsements. Professor of Astronomy, Macquarie University, described it as a brilliant way to introduce young readers to the wonders of space. Another one that I love is agonising death, instant destruction, danger everywhere, fun. From Professor Brian Gainsler, an astrophysicist at the University of California and who was Young Australian of the Year uh, in 1999, what would your advice be for authors on potential endorsements? Well, just see if you can find experts in the field. I was quite lucky because I studied astrophysics and I know all of those endorsers personally. They've gone on to do amazing things like um, studying overseas and um, Andrew, the professor of, at Macquarie University, we both applied for the same job. He got it. I didn't. Oh, um, so he <laughs> owed you an endorsement. <laughs> well, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, just try and find experts in the field. There will be a follow-up, which is 50 Ways to Die in the Ocean. I don't know any oceanographers, marine biologists myself, but um, I will approach people and ask them if they would like to read it and if if they think it's good, if they might provide some nice words about it. And And that would be your advice, that if you're approaching someone you don't know, give them lots of time draft yeah. polite email send the whole manuscript what's what's the best way to go about yeah. so um with this one i had i didn't have a lot of time for it because we had to wait for the illustrations so being a graphic novel if it was just the words one after the other because there's no he said she said that wouldn't make a lot of sense and also nico has just done such a brilliant job illustrating it that the the pictures really bring it to life as well um, but yes do do ask permission first um, give a bit of a bio of who you are and what you're trying to achieve with the book as well mm. and a bit of the background and why you think they would be a good endorser 
Oh yeah, that's important. So it's a tailored approach. Yeah. Yeah. And I think because, you know, we get excited and we want to send, once we know the book is going to be finished, you want to start contacting people. But I always say to authors, like, hold off, wait until the book, you know, is finished so that you've got something to send them. Otherwise it's kind of like, is she going to follow through on this book? You know, and then you sort of, you could, you know, they might be less likely to agree, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you, want, you want it to be like just when you're even pitching a, a book or sending in a manuscript to a publisher, you want it to be as perfect as it can possibly be. It's not, I don't want you to see potential. I mm. want you to, to see this brilliant product. Yeah. No rough diamonds. No. <laughs> uh, 50 ways to die in the ocean. Can yes. you give us a few of those? I can think of some pretty obvious ones. It's That's quite a serious topic because that's a, a, re, a very real danger. Yeah, it could happen. And um, so I don't want to have anything that is particularly likely to happen in a day-to-day -day sort of scenario. Um, so there's many different ways to die on board a submarine. And um, one of them is, you know, if the chef gets upset, you don't want to upset the chef because he has access to meat cleavers. If it's a nuclear-powered submarine, something could go wrong, like anything could go wrong with oxygen scrubbers on board a submarine. So um, there's a few different ones like that. And then there's um, some silly ones as well, um, like getting stabbed by a narwhal if you just happen to be in the wrong part of the ocean at the wrong time. Yeah. And um, one of my favourite ones is um, if you're snorkelling and a bird nest, decides to nest on top of your pipe and then you obviously can't breathe. can't breathe. And if it's a very heavy bird, then you can't lift yourself above the surface either. So very unlikely, but possible. Possible, 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 not probable. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, I would love to hear uh, some of your insights on sourcing a great illustrator if you're writing a children's book. Um, so there are generally lots of illustrators out there. I think the Australian Society of Authors has uh, sort of a stable of illustrators where if you are an illustrator, you can put your work in and then other authors can source you that way. I did it a little bit differently for 50 Ways to Die in Space. And that's because it's a little bit lower budget um, than some of the really big um, publishers. And I thought it would be nice also, like the publisher, it's quite a new indie publisher and I thought it'd be nice to sort of help people with their careers as well. So I wrote to my children's school, their high school, they have an art and excellence program. And so I approached the teacher in charge of that and I said, do you have any present or past students or staff who might be interested? And she sent it out to her students and um, a few of them got back to me and then we had to choose between them, which was really heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, but we're very happy with the author, the author, the illustrator that we chose. And that was um, Nico O'Sullivan. Yes. And have you, is, is that the first time you two had worked together? Yes, it is. It's the first time we've worked together. And um, you don't really have a lot of interaction like human one-to-one -one interaction, face-to-face in, in -face interaction with illustrators. Um, so we did we did the interview over Zoom and then I don't know when I actually met Nico for the first time. I can't remember at the moment, but um, we have been getting together for the book launches that we've been doing and um, we get on very well as well. And he was quite happy for us to use some puppets to do the launch because reading out a graphic novel is very difficult if you're one person reading oh this guy says this and this guy says that but it works better if there's two of you and you've got a puppet each and you can... oh, when did you get the puppets made I have them here. oh I would love to see them so here we have our puppets oh that's amazing yeah, this is our very um our puppet who is very much Think space is beautiful, would love to travel there. And then we have our doomsayer who's like, no, 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 if you go there, you will die. Oh. Wow. I, and so what did you, did you get them made by a, I was going to say a puppeteer, but I think that's the person who controls the puppet. Is oh, no, no, I made them. You made them? I made them. <laughs> that's amazing. So you've got those skills too. You're multi-talented. Uh, yeah, it was one of those things where um, I, 
I thought the only way I'm going to get these puppets is if I make them myself because I looked up puppet makers in Australia and there weren't that many and it was kind of a short short time frame and uh, but I did find something on the web um, a guy called Puppet Nerd who did just a, a head for puppets and I thought well this guy is really he's just a head really with some arms and legs on and then with the other one I had to be a bit more innovative oh I made them at my house I have a sewing machine. I've got my parents gave me a sewing machine. Oh, gave me and my partner a sewing machine for our wedding um, 25 years ago. And I sewed them up here. Went to Spotlight, got all the ingredients oh. and put them together. And uh, yeah. What is your advice for a successful relationship with a, a successful relationship with, with a vision published? Oh, okay. Um, so. Yeah, so I saw Sophie Hannah give a talk um, for the David Awards one year and she said her advice, which I think is great, is be a good author. And by being a good author, always deliver on time, um, always be, be as available as you can, say yes to everything. So a lot of, it's not just writing the book, you want the book to go out to people. So do as much marketing and publicity as you can. And I do that by, at the book launches, I also do some craft activities for the kids as well so that they have, they've got listening and joining in and then they get to actually do something and take something home at the end. So try and do all those things. Um, I also got into doing some, I've got an Instagram account now. I never really had, never had one before. So that's my bookstagram thing. So I'm Eileen. What's your handle? Eileen Bookweb. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, terrific. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Eileen.